Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn an old Office PC into an emulation powerhouse using Bado Serra. Now, what I have on the table here are a couple different options that I've actually used over the last few years. They work great with emulation and also work great with Bado Serra specifically, but one of the big reasons I chose these PCs to show off is the price. You can pick one of these units up anywhere from $75 to $150 depending on the configuration on eBay, and sometimes you can even find these office PCs for free near you. Now, one of the main requirements that I personally like to recommend when picking up a PC like this is make sure it's at least a third gen Intel CPU. Third gen and up is going to work perfectly fine with Bado Serra. With recent updates, I've personally run into issues with second gen and first gen CPUs, but if you already have one of those systems laying around, you can always test this out. I mean, chances are you can get it up and running, but you will get better performance out of third and fourth gen. So three of these PCs here actually have fourth gen i5s. We have a Lenovo, an HP, and another small Lenovo, the M92P. But my personal new pick is the Optiplex 3050. I recently did a video on this mini PC and it performs absolutely amazing with emulation. It's powered by a 7th gen i5. It's the 7500T low powered version. But even on an older 4th gen i5, you can still do GameCube and Wii at full speed with the built-in Intel graphics because we're not going to be using any kind of GPU, video card, or graphics card with any of these. Just the built-in Intel UHD graphics. So before we get started here, there are a few extra things you're going to need to turn your old PC into an emulation powerhouse, so let's go over those right now. So I'm going to be using this Optiplex 3050. It's got 8 gigs of RAM. It came with a 128 gigabyte SSD, which I'm actually going to be using to install Bado Serra on, and it does PS2 pretty well. First thing you're going to want to consider is a controller. You can go wireless or wired. You can pick up a two-pack of these cheaper PS3 clone controllers for about $16 to $18 or you can go with a higher quality USB controller. But keep in mind, Bado Serra will work with a PS3 and PS4 controller wirelessly as long as you have Bluetooth or a dongle, or it'll work wired with an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller, and you might already have one of those laying around. Next on the list, we're going to need a separate hard drive to install Bado Serra on. You can actually just use a USB drive, but I'm going to opt to use this 128GB SSD along with this SATA to USB adapter. This is going to make life so much easier. These are fairly cheap on eBay and Amazon. Links for everything I mentioned in this video are in the description. Basically, this turns our drive into a USB drive, therefore making it a lot easier to get Bado Serra installed on said drive. You can use this with an SSD or a mechanical drive. Mechanical drives will offer more storage at a lower price. Next on the list, I recommend a separate USB drive, and this is how we're going to transfer our games over to the internal drive, because once we flash our operating system, being Bado Serra, to the SSD or hard drive, we're not going to be able to read it in Windows without a third-party application. And Bado Serra already has a file manager built in, and it actually makes it really easy to transfer games from this USB. And finally, you will need a keyboard for the initial setup, but once we have this all set up, you can navigate everything with a controller. So the first thing we need to do is get Bado Serra installed to our internal drive. And we're going to be doing this from a Windows PC, but this will also work with Mac or Linux. If you're using a Linux PC, you do not need this USB drive. You can actually plug the drive right in and transfer your games that way. But most people who are going to be following this tutorial will be using a Windows PC. So go ahead and grab your hard drive, adapter, and USB drive. We're going to move over to a separate Windows PC to get this installed. All right, so now that we have our hardware ready to go, it's time to install Bado Serra to our SSD or hard drive. It really depends on what you chose. First thing I did was plug in my SSD using that USB to SATA adapter. I've renamed it 128 SSD, so I know exactly where it is. This is what we're going to be installing our operating system to. So the very first thing we need to do is download the correct version of Bado Serra for a PC. I'll leave a link for this website in the description, badoserra.linux. Lots of great information over here. They do have a wiki page, they have a change log, and a forum if you need some help. I'm going to choose Get Bado Serra. From here, there's a lot of options, but since we're working with an older PC, what we want to do is go with X64. This is for a desktop or a laptop. Unfortunately, they discontinued the 32-bit version, but uh, 64 is going to work with what we need. So we're going to download the direct link. It's going to start our download and it's 1.8 gigs. While this is downloading, let's go ahead and download the software we're going to use to get this installed on our hard drive or SSD. And that's going to be Etcher. Again, link for this is in the description. I always download the portable version, but this will work with Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm going to go with the portable Windows version. 
and I'm just going to wait for everything to finish up downloading, and then I'm going to place it on my desktop for easy access. All right, so it's finished downloading. We have Etcher here and the Botocera image that we just downloaded. We want to extract this. It just makes it easier. So I'm going to right click and extract. Once it's finished extracting, we're going to go into that folder. And as you can see, we now have a Botocera disk image file. This is what we're going to be flashing to our SSD, hard drive, or USB drive. We're going to open up Etcher. From here, we're going to choose Flash from File. This is going to be that image we just extracted. Mine's on my desktop in that Botocera folder, Disk Image File. Next, we need to select our target, which in this case is going to be an SSD. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can use a mechanical drive, an SSD, or a USB drive. It's really up to you. We're going to choose this, and since it's a larger size, it's actually going to give me a warning. Make sure you choose the correct drive. That's one of the main reasons I renamed this and set it as Drive Z. That way I know exactly where I'm flashing this to. Select, Flash. Like I said, it's going to give us a warning because it's a little large. It's a 128 drive. I'm going to choose Yes, I'm sure, because I'm 100% sure this is the drive I want to flash to. And Etcher's going to start flashing Potosera to that drive for us. This is going to take care of everything. And there it is. Botocera is now flashed to our drive. We can actually boot this up on our PC. But before we move back over there, we're going to want to add our own games. And for this method, we're going to do it all within Botocera. But when it comes down to it, the easiest way that I found to do this is actually transfer your games to a separate USB drive. I have some games on my desktop in a folder called Games. I can't tell you exactly where to get these. Your best bet would be rip your own, but you can always do a quick Google search. I have some Dreamcast, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, N64, PS1, and SNES. We do have a file manager inside of Botocera, and instead of connecting over network, I highly recommend transferring these to a USB drive, and that way we can transfer them to our internal drive while we have Botocera booted up. So let me go ahead and grab my USB drive that we're going to transfer these games to. Okay, so I've plugged in the USB drive I'm going to transfer my games to. It's just a 32 gigabyte drive, USB 3.0, link for one of these will be in the description. And I'm going to go to my games directory on my PC, and I'm just going to transfer everything over to this USB drive. So we have Dreamcast, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, N64, PS1, and SNES. Give this a little while to transfer over, then we're going to move over to the PC we're going to run Botocera on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this up and running. I have my controllers. I opted to use the wired controller, but you can go wireless. I would recommend something with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. They're pretty cheap on eBay. Links to everything will be in the description. Personally, I'm a big fan of this little Optiplex 3050. We have our SSD that we install Botocera on and our USB drive that contains our games. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and install this SSD. Uh, it's gonna be different for each PC, but if you're running one of these little Optiplexes, it's really easy to do. Most of them will come with a hard drive bracket. It's just going to plug right in here. Another thing that I highly recommend having on hand is a keyboard. It could be wired or wireless. But uh, now that we have this together, I'm going to go ahead and plug in all of my peripherals except for that USB drive and boot this up for the first time. All right, so upon first boot, you may need to go into your BIOS and change a few settings. Now with this PC here, since it's running from an SSD, it actually just boots directly up. But with other PCs that I've tested this on in the past, I've had to go into the BIOS and change a couple settings. Now in order to get into your BIOS, it's a bit different for different manufacturers, but basically when your PC is booting up, there's a certain hotkey you hit on your keyboard, be it delete, F12, F2, sometimes F7, but with this one here, it'll bring me to the boot options by pressing delete while it's booting up, and from there, I can go into the BIOS. And from within the BIOS, there's actually two settings I always like to change on all the PCs I run this with. I go to boot options, otherwise known as boot sequence on these Dell PCs. I change it to legacy boot instead of UEFI. In my experience, I've run into more issues with Botocera trying to boot it up in UEFI mode, so legacy, in my opinion, is the way to go. Next thing you can do is change your boot priority, or the first boot drive that your PC detects and tries to boot from, and I've just set this one to my internal hard drive, which is that SSD we flashed Botocera to. So just to recap, I boot this in legacy mode, and I always set the drive I have Botocera installed as my first boot drive. From here, we're going to make sure we save and exit. So first boot of Botocera, it's going to extend that partition for us. This is working on the SSD we have Botocera installed on. It should be pretty quick if you're using an SSD. 
And there we have it. We're now booting into the operating system, Botocer Linux. So I'll give this a second to boot up. And the first boot is always longer than any other ones because it needed to partition that drive for us. But now we have it up and running on our PC. So first things first, we need to set up our controller. I'm just going to be using this wired controller. I'm just going to plug it right into one of the free USB ports. And this is already set up as an Xbox 360 controller, so it'll work with Botocera right out of the box. But if for some reason you're using some kind of off-brand controller that doesn't get detected, grab your keyboard and press the space bar. This is going to bring us into the Botocera menu. Scroll down to controller settings, and the very top option is configure a controller. We're going to enter this menu. Our controller is being detected, and we're just going to hold A. And from here, it's very self-explanatory. We're going to set our controller up. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, our left analog stick, right analog stick, our shoulder and trigger buttons, L3, R3, and our hotkey, which I always set to my select button. Choose OK, and our controller is now mapped. But remember, some controllers will automatically be mapped. I've had really good luck with the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One controller already being ready to go with Botocera. So we're up and running, we got our controller working, and there are some freeware games that we could actually start playing right now, but we definitely want to add our own. And they've actually made it really easy to do this because there is a built-in file manager. Remember that USB stick we transferred our games to? We're going to plug it into the PC. Once it's plugged in, we're going to grab our keyboard and press F1. So I've still got the keyboard connected. We'll just grab it here on the main menu, press F1, and we're going to enter that file manager. What we're going to do is actually transfer the games from that USB drive over to our hard drive using this file manager. So I've just swapped over to my game capture to make it a little easier to see, but uh, from here we have a share folder and we also have that USB drive. Remember, this was a 32 gigabyte USB drive, Dreamcast, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, N64, PS1, SNES. We're gonna go to our share folder and within the share folder, you're gonna find a folder called ROMs. We also have our BIOS section. Now, if you're interested in adding BIOSes for certain systems that require them, I recommend heading over to the Potosera website. They have that wiki, they explain everything you need. In this video, we're just going to focus on getting some games over. So we're going to go to our ROMs folder. And in here, we have each separate folder for each separate system. PS2, PS3, PSP, PSX, which is PS1. Uh, N64 is in here, SNES. We have some MAME, some links. And if you haven't guessed by now, basically what we're going to do is head over to our USB drive. We're going to grab our games. So we'll start with Dreamcast. I'm just going to copy these, move to my ROMs folder and the share folder find Dreamcast, and paste them right in here. While this is going, we can actually head back to our USB drive. We'll do GameCube, same way. I'm just going to copy them, ROMs, GameCube, paste them in here. Now, if you wanted to go through and just create folders on that USB drive named exactly as they are here, you can take that whole USB drive, all the contents, copy them and transfer them like that. But for this video, I just did it a little bit differently. We'll do one more here, N64 from our USB, grab my N64 games, copy, ROMs, N64, paste them. These are now transferring from our USB drive to the SSD we have Botocera installed on. Just be patient and let everything transfer over. Uh, in my experience, I found that this is one of the easiest ways to get games over to our hard drive. Now, you can actually do this over network from your PC, but if you already have this set up, why not utilize the file manager built into this system? So all of our games are finished transferring over. File. Close window. Now we're back at the main emulation station menu. Our games aren't going to show up just yet, and that's because you can do a reboot or you can just press start on your controller. Game settings. Update games list. I'm going to choose this. And there we have it. We now have our new sections. PlayStation with the games I transferred over from that USB. Dreamcast. We have some Game Boy Advance, GameCube, uh, N64, and Super Nintendo. Now if you take a look at this, you might notice that the games I just transferred over have no artwork whatsoever. So let's go ahead and scrape these. There will be a few that already have artwork. These were the freeware games that came pre-installed but the stuff that I installed has nothing. So we're gonna back up, press start, and you will need to be connected online for this to work. You can use Wi-Fi that's built into your PC. Personally, I prefer just plugging in an ethernet cable. If you wanna use Wi-Fi, go to your network settings, 
enable Wi-Fi, as long as you have Wi-Fi on your system. Enter your SSID here and your Wi-Fi password. But for me, what I do is just plug an Ethernet cable in and I'm now connected online over Ethernet. So we'll back up and from the settings menu, we're gonna find an option called Scrape. We're gonna choose this. I choose the GamesDB because we don't need to sign in or anything like that. Image source, screenshot, title screenshot, 2D box art, it's really up to you. I'm just gonna go with screenshot. You can go with the 2D box if you'd like to, logo source, wheel. But there are some options that you can mess around with. I'm just gonna go with none, and my logo source will be wheel. We can scrape fan art. You can scrape the backside of the box, but uh, I'm just gonna go with the screenshot, so we'll scrape now. You can deselect any systems you don't wanna scrape. But from here, I'm just gonna choose start. And up in the top right hand corner, it's gonna give us a status on everything being scraped right now. This could take a while depending on how many games you have installed. I'm just gonna let this one finish up. And now my box art has been scraped. So if I go into N64, you'll see that the games that I just transferred over from that USB drive now have artwork. SNES, what else did I do here? Uh, some Dreamcast. And unfortunately it didn't scrape this game and that's because of the naming convention. I have that USA at the end. If you wanna go through and rename this, you could re-scrape it, it's really up to you. But we've got our games installed, we've got our box art, and we can actually start playing these games right now. But there are a few extra settings that I'd like to show you. One of the main ones being, you might not be getting sound right now out of your HDMI port. We can actually head back to the settings, press start, scroll down until we see system settings, and from here, our video output is set to auto. That's gonna be our HDMI or VGA, depending on what you're using. Our audio output is also set to auto. Sometimes these older PCs do have a speaker built into the PC itself, and most of the time it will use that speaker. But we want audio over HDMI. So what we need to do is find the correct channel. Usually it's HDMI zero, PCH. This is my Intel HDMI output. And now I should have sound out of HDMI. If you get into a game and you don't have HDMI sound yet, you will have to change this channel, but most of the time I find that it's HDMI zero. Changing the look of Botocera is actually really easy. The stock theme that comes pre-installed is the carbon theme designed for Botocera. Personally, I do like this, but there are some other great themes that we can easily download. We've already connected our PC online, so we can just press start, scroll down to updates and downloads, themes, and it's gonna give us a list of the themes and it also gives us a quick look over on the right hand side. So if you see a theme that you like, uh, one of my favorites here is Epic Noir. I'm gonna download this one, install. It's gonna give us a status up in the top right hand corner. So I've got this one installed now. Press start, UI, and here's the theme. Like I said, we're using the stock carbon theme, but we wanna to change to that new theme we downloaded, which is Epic Noir in my case. We'll just back up and it's automatically gonna change that theme for us. And the last advanced tip for Botocera that I wanna show you is setting up your controller properly for the standalone emulators like GameCube and PS2. There are some others in here. So in order to change the settings of the standalone emulators that are included with Botocera, we're gonna be on the main menu of Emulation Station here. Grab your keyboard, press F1. We're gonna go back to that file manager. From here, we have a section called Applications. You can see that these are the standalone emulators that come included. We have a few to choose from, and running these will depend on how powerful your PC is. This PC that I'm using here, this mini Dell, does a great job with PSP, PS2, PS1, GameCube, and Wii. We're just gonna go with the Dolphin emulator, which is for GameCube and Wii. We're gonna launch the application from here with our mouse. We still have our controller plugged in, so from the menu up here, we're gonna to go to controller, configure. This is gonna bring up our controller menu. We need to choose the correct controller. It really depends on what you have plugged in. But like we saw, mine is detected as an Xbox 360 controller. You can also hit the refresh button. Now, what we need to do is choose each one of these corresponding buttons and press the button on our controller. So for A, I'm gonna press A on my controller, B, be on my controller, it might show up differently here, but it's mapping that button that I pressed. X, Y, 
it's very self-explanatory and you will need to do this in order to set this controller up properly for these standalone emulators. We're only mapping for the Dolphin emulator right now, so you will have to go through for other ones like PS2, Duck Station, and even PS3 if your system is powerful enough to handle it. Once you're finished mapping your controller, choose Close and Close. Another quick tip when it comes to GameCube and Wii emulation with Botocera, from within the Dolphin emulator, which we just mapped our controller, we have Graphics. If your system's powerful enough, we can actually upscale this, and this one will do 720p. I could leave it at OpenGL or change it to Vulkan, but it is running the standalone version of Dolphin, so if you've ever configured it before, this should be a breeze for you. We'll choose Close, and we're going to exit this. Again, we only map Dolphin, so if you want to do it for 3DS, Duck Station, PS2, and even PS3, you can. With uh, PPSSPP, I found that it usually detects the controller automatically no matter what it is. But once we launch a game, we can easily get into the menu from there, so you won't need to map it here. But yeah, now you have Botocera completely set up on your older PC, and I really dig this operating system, especially when it comes to these cheaper PCs. It does work really well on these Intel systems, Dell, Lenovo, and even HP, which can be gotten on eBay for pretty cheap nowadays. Before we wrap this video up, there's one last thing that I'd like to show you. We can actually change per emulator, and uh, or per system. So if we press start, we go to game settings, all the way down, per system advanced configuration. So if I want to go to, let's say, uh, Dreamcast, I can set this up to have a game ratio of whatever I'd like, 4x3, 16x9, it's really up to you. Most of the time, things are going to be set to auto. Video mode, smooth games, you can set this up the way you'd like. But one of the main benefits to entering this menu here is changing your emulator. So right off the bat, with Botocera, Dreamcast is going to be running with RetroArch and Flycast. We can actually change this to Flycast, which is the standalone Flycast, or Redream. Personally, I prefer using Redream, so I'm going to use that and back up. And now, when I start a Dreamcast game, instead of using that Flycast core in RetroArch, it's going to be using Redream instead. So yeah, that's pretty much it for turning your old PC into an emulation powerhouse. I know this was a bit drawn out, but I kind of wanted to cover all the bases. I mean, after watching this video and reading through the Botocera wiki, you should be able to install this on any PC. As for all of the parts I used in this video, I will leave links in the description. Some are going to be eBay, some are going to be Amazon. I'll try to find the cheapest stuff. But uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. And remember, read through that Botocera wiki, join the forum. There's lots of great people over there to help. But that's it for this one. I hope you have this up and running on your PC. And like always, thanks for watching.